think we're now live. Um, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, to our April NHSR webinar on approaches to teaching R. Uh, my name is Nastasia Tsarinova, and I will be introducing today our um, guest speaker, Jane Sloan, uh, who is a PhD student and uh, studying cognitive psychology at the University of uh, New South Wales. Uh, before I hand over to today's host, I would like to let you know about uh, some exciting opportunities uh, we have in our community. First of all, we are running our training regularly. Uh, you can uh, check it out on our website and on our Twitter. Uh, hopefully you can see all the links uh, here on the slide. Uh, also, NHSR community is funding open source solutions, uh, which is called uh, NHSR solutions. So uh, please read about them on our website as well. Uh, we are very keen to help the NHS and public sector of huge benefits of R, and uh, we are really keen to hear about your project ideas. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we uh, do make sure to get in touch with us. We have uh, lots of exciting opportunities. We have webinars, uh, book clubs. Uh, you can write a blog, you can offer training, or you can just be part of our community on Slack and ask your R questions and answer some of other R questions. Today's webinar should run until 2 p.m. Uh, it's being recorded and will let be published on our website and YouTube page. Uh, and all the materials such as presentation will also be shared there. If you have any questions, uh, hopefully you should be able to see live Q&A function and our host uh, will answer these questions as we go. Uh, so uh, after each section of presentation, uh, I will be moderating this uh, discussion. Uh, if you have any questions after the webinar, do please also reach to us via Slack or uh, contact our Twitter page. Uh, we will also share a link to Jenny's uh, Twitter and website in the uh, announcement, so you can also reach out to her and uh, follow her on various social media platforms. And also at the end of the webinar, we would really like to hear your feedback. Uh, the, the link will be shared in the announcement section as well. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I will hand it over to Jenny. Uh, as I said, she's a PhD student studying cognitive psychology, uh, and also she's a great advocate for R and uh, for also for uh, equality in R. Uh, she is a member of Women in Math and Science Champions Program in the university she uh, is work. She was working studying in, and also she's participating in various outreach activities uh, to inspire women to pursue math uh, careers, which is uh, amazing. Uh, over to you, Jenny. Great, thank you. Well, first, thank you so much for that introduction. Hopefully you can see my slides and can hear me all right, but please let me know if you can't. Uh, also, thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. I'm really excited to share this talk. Uh, as you can see, the title is Approaches to Teaching R. And, and now just quickly before I get started, I wanted to point out that all of my material is already posted up on GitHub. So I have a repository here um, and I'll just quickly show you. So this is my GitHub account and this is my repository. All of the material is here. So I'm guessing some of you at least are probably quite familiar with GitHub. So you can go and download the file here or clone it and copy it and open it in our studio. I have some notes here within the readme file, but I really wanted to point out in this talk today, I will be sharing quite a few different resources, um, which might get a little bit overwhelming at times, but please don't worry because I have links to everything here. And I just wanted to give you all the information that I could uh, within this presentation. Okay, so as just a little bit of an overview for the layout of this talk, when I was trying to design um, the format of this talk, I, I really thought of two questions, two important questions that I wanted to answer. One is what online platforms would I recommend for teaching R? So that's kind of how I'll start my talk. And then I'll move on to the second question in terms of content and teaching material, where should you start? So these are quite big questions and I'll do the be my best from my experiences to answer. And then I'll end with just a few general tips um, that I don't want to leave out. All right, so even before diving into that first question, 
just I wanted to quickly go through and share my experiences teaching art. And so over the past two years, I've had the opportunity to teach a few different courses and workshops on uh, on R. And so the youngest students I have worked with have been secondary school students, so years seven and eight. And this was fun because one of my friends and colleagues and I, we designed a series of workshops completely ourselves, and we kind of wanted to focus on introduction to R and data science. And with each of these courses, you'll kind of see this common theme that we wanted to have concrete projects for the students to work on. So in this course, we actually asked the students ahead of time. We did a little survey and asked what are they interested in? What are their hobbies? And they, this was not a surprise to us, but a lot of them said they were interested. They liked sports and interested in climate change, which was great. So we kind of designed this these workshops around a project where the students would work in small groups and and then they would um, come up with a research question related to one of two data sets that we picked. So the data sets were either on the Olympics in Tokyo or a data set on the annual rainfall in Australia. So then the students working together, they were using R uh, to analyze data and graph their results. So that was a really fun project and workshops to work on. I've also worked with older um, high school students, slightly older. These were year 11 students and they were part of a one week summer school on cognitive psychology that was part of University of New South Wales. Again, this is where I have been doing my PhD. And again, this was one uh, summer school that I designed pretty much from scratch. And for this one, kind of a similar concept. We had each student generate a unique hypothesis related to a psychology experiment that we actually ran and collected data all together, you know, in real time. And then we helped them uh, using R. Again, they would analyze their data, graph their results, and write up a final report. And then most recently, I've had the pleasure of working with university students. I was a teaching assistant for a psychology course. Um, however, this wasn't your typical traditional Psych 101 course. This was this was a really fun course, and I actually learned probably just as much as the students, where the students would work in small groups, and they were they had this daunting task to try to reproduce results and figures from published articles. So this course was all about learning about reproducibility, open science, and how to use R. Um, so that was that, that was another really fun course that I was part of. And so my experiences teaching R with, with these students, for the most part, all of them were brand new to R, complete beginners to coding and programming. And I just thought it was so rewarding and so much fun to work with these students. And you know, by the end, I was the one learning. They were teaching me functions and packages that I've never heard of. So definitely a, a very rewarding process. And now with all that being said, I just thought I, I was I'm really keen to share my insights on what I've learned through these experiences with you. OK, so with this first question, what online platforms would I recommend for teaching R? I'll go through two and the first one is our studio cloud and I this is definitely my go to one if if you have the resources and if it's possible now if you go to the website our studio clouds website you'll probably see this quote data science without the hardware hassles and with my experiences working with beginners and students getting started is often the hardest part Right, trying to go through and install R, download R Studio, everyone runs into different error messages. And then trying to understand what is installing packages versus loading packages. I find that the students can often get overwhelmed. And you know, that's not really how you want to start off their R coding experience. But fortunately, with R Studio Cloud, you can avoid a lot of the hassle. And and I'll show you and kind of show you an example in just one minute. 
But another really great thing about our Studio Cloud is that it offers a variety of different plans. So there is, of course, a free plan, which I use most of the time. But in terms of teaching, if you're working with uh, a number of students, there are limitations to the free plan. So instru the instructor plan might be your best option. So logging into our Studio Cloud will look like this. It's quite easy to sign up if you've never used it before. Uh, you can either create your own RStudio account or easily log in with Google or GitHub. So I'm just going to go over to RStudio. So I've already logged in here. So you can see this is my RStudio account. So this is what it yours will look similar. And, and so right now I don't have any projects out here, but as I said, I have taught several courses, so I have used RStudio Cloud with some of the courses. And if you go to your workspace, and you're welcome to follow along if, with me if you want to open RStudio Cloud or just watch, that's also totally fine. So if I click on your, my workspace, here are all of my different uh, workspaces or the different courses that I've been part of. I will go into one just to show you what it looks like and talk about the different projects, but I did want to point out if you scroll down, there is all the information about plans and pricing. So if you're interested, I won't go through all the details here, but it does. This is the perfect place to come and find the perfect option for you. So we have the cloud free and cloud instructor. And now I think this looks like it's changed since the last time I've used the instructor, but uh, it's it's pretty easy to use and there are different options for you. Their only requirement is that you have to have a teach you have to be a teacher at a accredited institution and you can look at the qualifications here. Or it also looks like if you're an R Studio certified instructor, you would be eligible for this. But I won't go into any more detail here because it's easy enough to find. OK, so I'll as an example, I'll go through one of my workspaces and just as a tiny bit of background, this new Scribo workspace. This is the workshops that I did with the secondary um, school students. They actually came up with this name. I thought it was pretty clever there. Uh, the students are from Newington College and they told me, I did not know this, that Scribo means coding or translating in Latin. So this is why we came, how we got this name. OK, so now if I go into this workspace. Now you can see within this new Scribo workspace, I have a total of four projects. And it's very easy to create a new project, as you can see this button here and you can just do new R Studio project. And, and so here, a couple of them, you can see workshop one and two, there's an assignment. It says that it's an assignment and I'll go through and explain what that means and how to get that set up. But I think just to kind of clarify exactly what workspaces and projects mean, I think it's easier to conceptualize it in kind of like this hierarchy where your workspace, at least I like to think about it, is the, like, it's like the different courses that I've taught and then the projects are the different lessons that I've created within that workspace, right? So we have workshop one, workshop two, and a final project. Okay, so I'm just going to go into this final project as an example. It does take, it often takes a minute or two for our studio cloud to open it up. So I've already opened it up here. Let me just resume. This hopefully will resume quickly. Um, it does keep track of the hours that you're using. So uh, if you're not currently on it, it will kind of go to sleep. So it's not using up all of your hours, which is what it was just doing here. OK, and hopefully it will pop up in just one second. Right, here we go. OK, so I'm sure many of you have used RStudio before. If you haven't used RStudio Cloud, this will look, this will still look very, very familiar. 
And that's because it's essentially just our studio online on the cloud. Right, so we have our console. This is one of the scripts that I created, our environment and all of the files that are part of this project. And so if you're creating a new project, you can either upload, you know, you can upload an R script or an RMD file just by clicking this button, or just as you would in R Studio, you can go and create a new script. And when you save it, it will save automatically in your files over here. So as an example, the, this is the final script, the final project template that I created. And I'll just point out this cool feature here. It's an outline, so you can navigate to the different parts within your markdown file because this is an RMD file. So, so here you can see because these students have never programmed before, I kind of created this template for them where they can just go and fill it out. So I kind of guide them on what they need to do. So first load libraries, and this is the R chunk where they would enter, you know, library tidyverse or something like that. And then read in the data, preview to the data and so on. And, and so once you're happy with your script uh, or the assignment that you've created, now you have to actually turn it into what RStudio Cloud calls an assignment, which means that everyone, all of your students can actually see it and start working on it. And just as a reminder, right, so we had workshop one as an assignment, but right now final project is not. So just to show you how to turn it into an assignment, we can go within our final project, we can go to settings and access. And this is where we want to make sure that everyone in your workspace can view this project. And then once you do that, this option will pop up where you can check it and make this project in uh, an assignment. OK, so I'm going to click off. Now we can. Let's just let me just try refreshing this and see if that works. OK, perfect. So now we did that and now you can see it's an assignment. And so. OK, so we can easily turn these projects into an assignment and this is my other absolutely favorite feature about our Studio Cloud is these assignments. And it's such a cool feature because as the instructor or teacher, you have access to all of the students assignments. Um, so whereas each student can only access and edit and modify their own assignment, they can't look at each other's or anything like that. You have the you you do have access to go in and look at all of the students works work. So this is great for a couple of reasons. One, of course, you can just check in on the students, make sure they're doing what they should be. But the biggest selling point for me is that it's absolutely amazing in terms of troubleshooting. Uh, just as a quick story, a little aside. For the one one of the courses that I taught where I didn't have access to our studio cloud, uh, it was during the pandemic. We were completely online and you know, students were running into all sorts of errors and warnings and things like that. I would get so many messages on Slack with a screen, a little screenshot saying this is my error message. Can you please help me? And I would, you know, there was not much I could do because I couldn't see their code or anything. So that was quite a nightmare for trying to troubleshoot online without being able to see code. But with RStudio Cloud, you avoid all of that, right? If a student has an runs into a problem, they can easily message you. I have an error on line 25. Can you please take a look when you have a chance, right? And then you can just go in, have a look, run all of their code and then leave notes for them. And it's it's so yeah, it's such a great tool. Um, the one thing to note with this is that only one person can be working on an assignment at a time. So you and your student both cannot be logged into the assignment at the same time. If that happens, someone will get kicked out and they'll have to wait until the other person leaves. Um, OK. So I 
I probably made this pretty obvious by now, but after teaching a couple of courses and workshops using RStudio Cloud, I would highly recommend it. Um, and also, uh, this is just one quote from one of the students. I asked for feedback specifically on RStudio Cloud. They said RStudio Cloud was very helpful, especially because the mentors could help us out, could help us with the code we were stuck on. You know, so it's really nice knowing that the students also appreciated that. And oh, and I knew I would forget this, but just as one final reminder, uh, as amazing as RStudio Cloud is, please keep in mind that it's not a permanent solution. So students, if they plan on using RStudio in the future, will eventually need to transition from the cloud to the desktop. Um, and, and I point this out because in with the students from the new Scribo uh, workshops, we actually ran out of time and I, you know, we I didn't have time to go through and help them with this. So I ended up making a little uh, YouTube tutorial for how to easily get all of your files from the cloud and how to set up your RStudio desktop. That's all on my YouTube channel, which the link is on my GitHub page as well. And so, OK, and so with that, maybe I'll this will be a good time if anyone has any questions, I guess specifically on our studio cloud. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, yes, we do have a couple of questions yeah. uh, about our studio. So uh, first question was from Noor. I think I, I hope I pronounced them correctly. Um, so the question was about uh, what would be your advice if you run out of space on our studio cloud? Um, assuming there is a limit on the space and allowed size. So yeah, that's a great question. And there is a limit, especially for the free for the free options. So I could just go back quickly. Um, I think if you're planning on using this for teaching, that you'll run out of space. The, the free cloud is probably won't be suitable for your needs. You will have to upgrade at least get some extra um, space because. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend the cloud instructor when I've used when I've signed up for the instructor plan before uh, someone emailed me and I could ask questions and they really help tailor it to my needs. Uh, but I think there is a way in case you're running out of room, you know, they'll just start adding on. It's not, uh, you know, like a few cents for the time or something like that. But yeah, I would definitely recommend checking out the instructor plan. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, and we also have uh, one more question about cloud. Um, someone asking if we can have a link or access to the RStudio Cloud for the project you were show, uh, showcasing. Oh. Uh, yes, OK, that's a good question. Let me just think about that for one second. I. I think so right now I'm I don't have the instructor plan anymore, so I can't I don't think that many people will be able to access it. I think what I can do is post it just on my general R Studio cloud, at least so people can see the project. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do that today or tomorrow and I can update you and I can share the link with you once that's done and hopefully that will work. Thank you, Jenny. This is super kind of you. Uh, I don't think we have any other questions about r Cloud just yet. Uh, so please do carry on. And uh, in the meantime, everyone is very welcome to keep posting questions. Yes. OK, great. Thank you so much. And there should be time at the end for questions. So if you do think of anything, um, yes, please just post them. OK, so our Studio Cloud, we can see a lot of great benefits for it, but of course, the biggest thing is you have to have the resources to use it, right? It's not free. It does cost at least a little bit of money. So as one alternative, next I want to talk about our pubs. Um, so the biggest selling point here is that it's free and easy to use. And this is. For the one class that I taught, uh, we did when I didn't have access to our studio cloud, we did a lot of our work in our pubs. So what is our pubs? It's it's just an online platform that's great for publishing and sharing specifically our markdown documents, which you can do straight from our studio. 
And you can really do it in these three simple steps. I'll go through an example in just one minute, but all you have to do is create an R markdown, you knit the file, make sure it, the preview looks good, and then within the viewer pane, you just click publish and select R pubs, and it's really as easy as that. Uh, and one thing to note is as soon as you publish your uh, markdown file, it will become public on our pubs' website, and but you are able to easily update existing files. So if you decide, if you realize you made a mistake or if you want to add to the document, it's very easy to modify your markdown file and the same way that you would publish it, you can just go and republish it and it will update. So in the past, I've used our pubs to mainly within the course that I taught to share code and notes with the university students. Um, this made it easier for them because they didn't have to worry about taking notes because I was just going to share all of my notes and code with them. And I've also used it for um, sharing code from different meetups like our ladies meetups. OK, so. Our pubs, this is. Let's see, so I've this is the website or it's just rpubs.com and I've already signed in and. I'll create an account is super easy, but I'll explain how we can, how you can do that if you don't have one. Um, but here I've just gone and. You can just go to view profile, so these are all the R markdown documents that I have published. And. And just to take a closer look at one of them, this is the first lesson that I taught with the um, university students, right? So remember they're complete beginners. So where else, where better place to start than going over some of the R Studio basics. And now I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I wanted to point out a couple of cool things. Now, of course, because it's an R markdown, you have, you can integrate your texts and notes along with code. And so you can see the format is really nice and it looks really pretty because our markdown, there are a couple of really awesome packages that lets you format and style your markdown files. So this specific one, which I'll show you exactly what it is once we go to our studio, you can even have a table of contents, which lets you, you know, just easily navigate through the document. So this was the biggest reason that I've used our um, our pubs in the past, but for let me see if this opens for for the students, our pubs was also really really useful. And now in this course, we had every week the students would post what we called a learning log, and this one student was kind enough to give me permission to share her very first learning log, and. And so pretty much they just they set goals for themselves and they just annotated the pro their process of learning R along the way. Right, so you can see she figured out she, you know, did her first classic Hello World code. Uh, discovered how to change the theme. I've actually never even used this one before this space lab theme, uh, the table of contents and so on. So this so R pubs is also a really good teaching tool for students as well um, because they won they're learning all about our markdown and and as the teacher you can see exactly what they're doing and if they get stuck anywhere you know they can even leave notes for you and ask questions along the way okay so with the, okay so now let's just test it out ourselves and i to do this i'm just going to open up um, my R Studio session, and again, this all this material is on GitHub. Um, I think there I, there should even be a similar R project. And so, again, I won't be doing any live coding here, so you are welcome to just follow along and watch for now. All right, all I'm going to do is open up my RMD file that I've created, rpubs.rmd, and I just put this together. I thought it would be useful, a little RMD for how to publish to RPUBs. And, and with this file, 
Uh, first, if you aren't familiar with R Markdown, I've shown a couple of examples, but uh, when I first learned how to code an R, I didn't know about Tidyverse or Markdown or, or any of that. And, and so I exclusively used R scripts. However, now that I know about R Markdown, it's all I use and it should, I just love it. So this next bit I just wanted to show, of course, because it's an R file, you are able to insert code. Uh, we don't have to worry about too much about the actual code that I've done. I just want to provide an example and show this will be just a pretty straightforward plot of a penguins data set from the Palmer penguins package, which looks like this. OK. OK, so now back to the main point here is how to turn this into an R pubs file. So once you're happy with your document, you can go ahead and click knit just to make sure it looks exactly like how you're imagining. And you can see it's rendering the file down here. Uh, it, it will just take a few seconds. And now in the viewer pane, we can see we have it rendered as an HTML document. And I'll just open this up in a new window so we can see the, it on the full screen. OK, great. So here we have our markdown file, but now it's as uh, .html. We can see all of our notes, all of our code, and even our plot. So, so that's really great. Um, but you may notice it's not the prettiest, right? The one that I showed you before with the RStudio basics, that was a little bit nicer and uh, more professional even. So I've included some notes here in case you're interested in uh, you know, making yours look a little bit nicer. There's two, at least these are the two that I've used and know about, two different uh, packages for using, for formatting your markdown file. One is PrettyDoc and one is RMD formats. And now actually, once you knit it, you can actually scroll down and these are links to the GitHub pages here. So you can see even more, browse even uh, more options for how to format it. But just as an example, it's quite easy. If we copy this, the code that I have here, and I even wrote a little note here, add this to your YAML. If we go back up, instead of this output here, I'm just going to replace it. Replace it, if I can copy it correctly. Let's try that again. And so now if I save this and knit the file once more. Here we go. OK, so this already looks a, a little bit nicer, right? We have different colors. The code looks much cleaner and easier to look at. So I do really like that one. Uh, I will show you because this is the one that we've seen before with the table of contents and everything. I will just change this once more. Say I'll save it and then knit it. And as it's doing that, I'll scroll down. And so we'll just let this knit. And let's open this one. OK, so now you can see that our markdown file wasn't very long, you know, not many lines of code, but we have this beautiful report with our table of contents and everything. So yeah, I really like that. This is one of the many reasons I love our markdown. So now the question is, how do we actually publish it to our pubs? And here again are three steps. Once you've knit your document in the viewer pane, click the blue icon in the top right corner. So here it kind of looks like an eye, I think. So you can just go click on it and click publish document. And now for me, because I've done this before, it's it will be really straightforward. You can just go R pubs and click publish. If and I'll actually do that in case it takes a minute or two to load. So if this is your first time, you will have to create an account. So instead of going straight to this page, I think I believe it will take you redirect you to a page where you can just easily set up an account. 
and then and then you can just go ahead and publish it. So all we have to do is give it a title. How to publish to our pubs and a slug, which is just the URL that you'll eventually share. So you can see this is my username and then I'll just go our pubs. OK, so now if you want to share this with you with people, you can just copy the URL and share it. And if we go back here, I'll just refresh this and you can see it's instantly uploaded and on my our pubs page. So that, yeah, so it's really such an easy way to share content and our code. And let me go back here. OK, so this was just in case uh, my Internet was slow and I couldn't go through with publishing everything, but we went through this process. If it's your first time and you need to create an account, you'll just have to e sit, uh, pretty easily create an account on this page. And then as you saw, you can just uh, enter in the details and publish it. OK. So before moving on, I'll take another moment here just to stop and see if there are any questions on our pods. Thank you, Jen. It's really interesting. I personally have never used our pubs before, um, so it's good to know about some extra tools. Uh, we have two questions which are uh, about uh, the same issue. I think people have been following your um, script and both uh, a few of our users said that they have error message after line 34 when huh. you try to knit. Uh, I don't I ask oh. what the error message is, but we'll see if people come back to us or if you can figure okay. it out. After you try line 34. So one thing I would definitely make sure is that your output, your YAML is formatting correctly. For example, if you have. If you're missing a space, your it won't knit, so it really has to be exactly like the code here. It is possible that you need to install some packages first that I just I didn't even notice with mine because I already have them installed. Um, those are the two things I can think of that might be the issue. Let me know if anyone if anyone has like more details about that error message. Yes, I think we will ask uh, those who uh, followed through and had Great. issues to just yeah send us another question with exact okay. error message okay, and we can okay. come back to this event. OK, sounds great. Thank you. Right. OK, great. So so now I kind of want to uh, change gears a little bit and talk about the second question of where should you start? And and my first piece of advice here is before you spend hours and hours creating new content, see what's already out there. I know this can be a bit overwhelming because there's so many fabulous blogs and tutorials, but um, it is incredibly useful when someone's already created an entire online series and you can just, you know, use that and teach, use that when, while you're teaching R. So, this is kind of where I'll give you quite a lot of different resources and I do encourage you to maybe, you know, keep these in mind, check them out later because I will go through quite a few of these. Just uh, I won't I don't have too much time to spend on any one of them. OK. OK, so one of the links is I at University of New South Wales, I was also part of a our organization that we called ourselves coders and in this organization we met twice a month with everyone and all of the members uh, once a month we held help sessions so drop in help sessions anyone can come ask questions share code and just work together and another meeting every month we would have workshops and i'll just quickly show you uh, where everything is posted here so for example, we had a data visualization using ggplot. You can come to this website. You can check out the workshop. Everything's recorded. All of the materials posted. So but the, the main reason I want to show you this website right now is that I, I wrote this very, very short blog for our resources for beginners. And I wanted to share just these 
Um, in particular, these two uh, resources. One is Are You With Me? And this is a series of online tutorials created by uh, our lady members from Our Ladies Sydney. And so some of the topics that they cover are reviewing the basic setups of our studio, learning about tidyverse, creating your very first plot with ggplot, and even introducing our markdown. And so I use this as um, some of the pre-work. So in the one week summer school with the high school students, we they actually had a couple of weeks of pre-work where they went through and they just watched some of these uh, tutorials on their own. And we got very, very positive feedback and it was a great introduction for beginners who have never used R and, you know, especially some, this is especially great for students who might be a little bit, you know, anxious about the thought of learning a programming language uh, or hesitant. This is a really gentle introduction to R to get you started. In another class with the university students, we used um, videos from Danielle Navarro's YouTube channel. She has quite a few different series of different playlists and they are all absolutely fabulous. She is just such an entertaining presenter, so I definitely do recommend checking out some of her videos and they they do get a little bit more complicated and use some um, you know real world psychology experiment data sets which I you know I am biased but I think that's really awesome. So those are a couple of uh, tutorials to get you started. And now for the past year, I, you know, a little bit of self promotion here, but I've been working on this blog post for a while now. And this is my, this is my website. And under blogs, you can go and find my introduction to our blog. And so I, I, I've, I've been working on this because pretty much the same reason as this talk. I've had my share of experiences teaching R and I wanted to just compile everything that I've learned into this blog post. So here, you know, I go through everything from installing R and R Studio to talking about working directory and R projects to to even introducing tidyverse. Right? So so if for me, this is these are a lot of the topics that I would definitely make sure to um, start off with for beginners and not skip over anything. Uh, of course, there is so much more that you can teach and that you can learn, but these were some of the ma major topics that I would recommend. So I do, of course, feel free to check out this blog in more detail. Um, I will say as I was creating this blog, I was getting overwhelmed with all the information. So, you know, it's 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 a pretty lengthy blog because I have so much that I wanted to share. But you know, if I was getting overwhelmed, I can only imagine that a, a beginner or someone who's never used R before, they would probably also be getting overwhelmed. So because of that, I decided to turn this into an even bigger project and kind of take this entire blog and break it up into three videos. So as you can see here, I have posted these different videos on my YouTube channel and it just kind of goes through uh, each of the sections one at a time. So the introduction, there's a tidyverse video and there's also a video on kind of tips about my workflow and how I would do a project in R. Um, so, so that's what, yeah, so that, just another resource for you to check out. And let me load this. I think this will take a second to load. Um, so, of course, there's so much to learn about R and I'm always still learning and it was only recently when I came across this package or I heard about this package called Learn R. And um, so I wanted to share this with you, not because this is something that I've done, but because I just think it's such an incredible package and tool. So I have here, um, a tutorial that was created by the R Girls School Network uh, to, pr to promote the use of R in secondary schools for girls. And one of the members of the network, which I'm also part of, 
uh, but tool. She's the one that designed and created this website and you can see it's uh, built and running through shiny apps, but it's all using this package called learn R. And and what it does or and you can even see right here, there's a little bit more information. You don't need to have anything installed in order to run these sessions. It's completely running through the learn R package and um, you can just go ahead and run the code that you see here. It even allows you to edit the code and test things out and then run it. So I'll just run the code. And you can see it's interactive, so straight away our plot pops up, which I just think it's such a cool thing. And, and there's so many great features that I don't even know all of them, but as an example here, if you're trying to get your students engaged and having them fill out and entering text on their own, you can even have them provide, you can provide hints for them. Um, so that's also really, really cool. So this is something that I still want to learn in the future, but I thought I would definitely share it with you today. Okay. And, and the very last topic I wanted to um, talk about, maybe just for a few minutes, because this, this is a bit more uh, ambitious and advanced and definitely more time consuming. But I believe that creating websites uh, can be a really great tool for teaching and sharing content. And now with with R with R and R Studio, there are two main packages, um, at least that I'm familiar with, Distill and Blockdown. So just a few pros and cons for each of them. Distill, it's great for making uh, in quotes simple websites relatively quickly and easily. However, there's less flexibility in terms of the design and layout. Um, here's one link. So I built a couple of distill websites and I'll show you uh, one of them in just one moment. And I definitely could not have done this without the help of Dr. Maria Tackett. And this is a link to her uh, a YouTube recording. It was actually of an Our Ladies meetup where she went through building websites with distill. So highly recommend checking that out. Uh, if you're interested in trying to build your own website. OK, so I have two websites that I built with uh, Distill, and I'll just show you one of them because I know we're getting low on time and I want to save a few minutes for questions. So this is the new Scribo website that I built for the uh, secondary school second students. And you can see because it's with R, all this page itself is an R markdown file, which means that I can embed my code and I can print the output. So even just to show them what the course and the schedule will look like, I we've already introduced some code in R. And I'm also here, you know, I'm, I have an option where they can go and check out all of the workshops and the materials. So again, these are all R markdown files. In this workshop, we went through our syntax and learning about packages. So you can see uh, we go through operators. They can you can see the code and again you can see the output. And now if I had known about learn R before, I probably would have tried to turn this into an interactive page, but you know, there's always more to learn. And and so this is just one example of the, the things that you can do with the distill website. Now with, with the blog down package, there is a lot more flexibility in terms of design and layout, but with that, it also, it's more complicated. The file structure is more complicated and it just, it does take a lot longer to get the hang of. I've also built a couple of um, websites with blog down and for my first blog down website, I relied heavily on Allison Hill's blog up and running with blog down. And so uh, definitely have to give credit for her help there. In the process, I created my own uh, our blog down blog, so you can check that out. That's also on my website. And one of my friends and I thought it would be fun to uh, create a YouTube series of tutorials to help people build websites using blog down. And so you can check that out as well. And I'll just show you the one you, we've already actually seen this, but the UNSW coders website, this was 
we built this using um, blob down as well. Okay. And just to end this talk, I wanted to just share a few final general tips. Uh, first, I think this one's really important. Don't skip over the basics, right? It's really important for students and beginners to under to get the installation process right, right? And then also understand how to install and load packages. Understanding working directories, this is something that I found students often struggled with um, and they found really challenging to kind of wrap their head around what is a working directory. So take time to go through that. And then of course, the basics of different types of variables, data frames and things like that. And this goes without saying, but of course you want to consider the age and if the students have any prior coding experience because of course, that will make a difference. And you want to have a fun and concrete project for the students to work on. Um, and the examples I shared at the beginning, you know, I could tell right away the students were really motivated because they kind of had their own research question and they wanted to go ahead and be and learn how to use functions and how to solve their problem in R so that they could answer their questions. And also, of course, this is a huge one. Be prepared to be amazed by how quickly the stu students learn and how much they will accomplish in a short amount of time. As I said before, by the end, I was the one learning and you know, it's it's such a rewarding experience to be part of. And lastly, enjoy being part of the art community. As I know, I'm sure you all know, it's a really great, welcoming and friendly community. And I'll end with this one, our illustration by Alice, Alison Force. Um, I really like this one. It's just, you know, learning and I would say even teaching art, it's a roller coaster. You know, there are a lot of up and downs, but you just have to enjoy the ride as you go. And so with that, thank you so much for listening and I'm happy to see if there are any other questions. Thank you, Jenny. It was amazing and very inspiring talk as well. And yeah, uh, it's great to see quite a few illustrations from Alison Horst. Uh, she presented at our conference in uh. 2020, I think. Uh, if we have time, I will try to publish the link to her talk as well, because she did speak about the uh, training. Uh, we do have one. So yes, yeah, sorry, we haven't heard anything about uh, knitting error for the R markdown part of your presentation, but we have uh, yeah, another question just generally about uh, um, teaching and training. Um, so our participant says, great talk. Uh, do you have any advice or thoughts on how to find opportunities to teach and also how to find the confidence to do it? Uh, I have used R for years, but still feel like I'm always still learning mm. myself. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the best thing that you can do is just try to get involved in different communities. Um, I don't know, maybe if you're in, if there's an R ladies, um, you know, everyone's welcome. It's not just women, but you know, it is predominantly women. I have been part of many different R ladies communities and you know, that gives you a chance to present but in terms of teaching, yeah, I think networking and seeing what other opportunities are out there. Um, you know, something that I'm involved in right now that I am I'm actually I'm having such a blast being part of is I mentioned it briefly, the R Girls School Network. And I mean, you're welcome to um, contact, go to that website. You can contact um, any, yeah, there should be contact details there. And, you know, that is all about teaching our lessons to younger students. So you, we can help you. I'm sure there's a way that we can help you get involved in that. Uh, thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, and also, yeah, I can add from the NHSR community perspective that we will also be uh, very supportive and we can help you. We used to run a uh, train trainer sessions uh, again just to uh, support people and teach uh, trainers how to be effective trainer. Uh, so do reach out to us as well if you want. But yeah, I think our latest, uh, as far as I know, is also very great and amazing community and there are lots of other communities. Um, there is our academia specifically, our health economics. Um, so yeah, uh, 
uh, hopefully um, it you will get confidence and teach. Um, we also have uh, just lots of thank you coming through as well. So I don't think there are any other questions. I will wait for just a couple of seconds uh, and while waiting just to say thank you to all the participants to, for attending today's session. Uh, we have our next webinar lined up for, as always, third Wednesday of each month. Uh, this time it will be on 18th of May and it will be about Innovation Scholars Data Training Program. Uh, also, we have quite a few workshops. Uh, we have our introduction to our workshop on, um, I think it's third or second Wednesday of each month. Uh, and we are hoping to announce more workshops as we go in. Um, so look out on our website and Twitter. Um, so I have not received any other questions. Um, so I think I will also now thank uh, Jenny for joining us today. Uh, it's been a great pleasure. We learned a lot and uh, also you get lots of links to share. Uh, so we will make sure that they're all being attached uh, to the uh, recording when we upload it on our YouTube page. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Great. Thanks so much for having me.